Hello, everyone. I welcome you to this interesting 60 minute talk and thank you for joining us from wherever you are. A bit of brief introduction about Anil. Anil Bami is a Reiki master and transformational mindset coach. He has worked with clients from professionals, CEOs, and entrepreneurs to hardworking moms and dads, mastering their negative mindset and helping them focus on what truly matters and is currently working on a book detailing his life and journey to reach as many people as possible to master their lives using his training. So over to you, Anil and uh, Monica. Thank you, Dr. Anand, for having us on board here today. And I would just like to say, um, we'll try to make this lighthearted and as enjoyable as possible. And what I'll start off by doing is just talking a little bit about the agenda for today. Uh, but just before I do that, I'm going to pass it over to my lovely wife to tell a little bit about herself. Hi, my name is Monica, and I'm the proud owner of Divine Health and Wellbeing. Uh, I'm a Reiki master, NLP practitioner, and a wellbeing coach. Uh, and I help uh, business owners, CEOs, chief executives, professionals, hardworking parents to just help them manage their stress and anxiety. So they don't have to worry about stress and anxiety, and they can really, truly enjoy their life to the fullest. So today's agenda, then, is just going to be about how to bring back the spark into a relationship, how to attract the right partner into your life, and, of course, learn yours and your partner's love language. Because once you know that, it makes life so much easier. So let's start off by saying... Who in this group today, who here today could do with a boost in their relationship? Just raise your hands. Virtually, because we can't see <laughs> some of you. So we have our hands up, and which means that we could all do a little bit more and more. Thank you, Manny. We could all do a little bit more to make our life even better. So my question, I guess. Uh, to Mr. Bami, is what defines a healthy relationship? What does healthy relationship mean or what does it involve? Well, to answer that question, I mean, if you think about it, relationships at the best of times can be complicated. I mean, we, we just all know this. But at the same time, they can be rewarding and fulfilling when you get them correct and when you get them right. When they hit right, it really, really feels as if your heart is at home, as if uh, the birds are chirping in the trees and the bells are ringing. You feel content. You feel at peace. And not only that, but you feel as if you're finally at home. How do you make a relationship a healthy and enjoyable relationship? Um, a good question. I would say healthy relationships involve uh, trust, uh, openness, respect for each other, uh, an understanding and open communication. These are key. These are the key pillars to having a, a good and honest open relationship. One where you feel great and the feeling is mutual for both parties. And I guess it doesn't take huge amount of effort or compromises because sometimes we end up doing a lot of compromises in a relationship because we think we have to to keep the peace. But you, if you're very much in tune with each other, it doesn't require a huge effort or compromises mm. and we respect each other we sort of take our decisions without fear we grow together we give the space for each of each of us to grow okay another question so how does a relationship turn bad Ooh. um well let's just start off by saying um, stress is a major factor and stress works both ways. So you can be stressed and um, from work, you can be stressed from life and many other reasons, and that can lead into your relationship. And when that happens, stress itself can be felt differently for each and every person because we all feel stress, but we all feel it in different ways and it impacts us very differently as well. But one thing that's very, very clear is that a stress affects us all in the exact same way as well. So we feel it differently, but it affects us in the same way. It can leave you burnt out. It can leave you obviously stressed, overwhelmed, and it can leave you depressed to a point as well. 
Now, these stresses alone tend to build up and cause the relationship to, to, to go on separate journeys. But a quick fact about stress itself. Stress is handled by cortisol in the body. And stress is okay for a certain amount of time, or should I say cortisol is okay in the body for a, a small amount of time because it helps us to, to deal with stress. But when we stay stressed and that cortisol is released into our bodies for over seven minutes, it can actually cause us to lose up to 50% of our IQ. And that's a fact. 50% of our IQ gone in seven minutes. Now, imagine if you're at work or if you're in a relationship or anywhere and talking with anybody or dealing with anybody, how that impacts you, how it would impact your relationships, how it would impact your workload, your clients, when 50% of your IQ has suddenly gone, all because of stress. So, so many people have lost their jobs recently. The business is shut down. Money became a massive issue. They might be stressed because of children, workload, working in different time zones. Before, if you are in business, you will have certain times that you'll work. If you're in a job, you'll work nine to five. Now, in lockdown, we ended up working seven in the morning because you are working with in tuning with the Indian time zone or different country time zone, then you're working at eight at night because you're working according to Canada or America time zone. So now the workload has exceeded and that caused a lot of stress in a relationship. So what happens is the certainty we had stresses shakes your foundation. It shakes your certainty. So when we don't feel certain, you feel very restless and you feel very anxious. Now imagine in, in a relationship, two of you are going through the stress and uncertainty and instability. Now imagine that double the stress, double the impact in a home. Now that's going to take your home life, your relationship, your work life, your children, everything out of sync. And now imagine the impact all, all over. We sort of very busy in our own head we are dealing with our own stresses. So we don't tend to take care of each other's needs and wants. We stop talking to each other. We start to disconnect. And obviously the, the home, which was our sanctuary, turns into a battleground. And so it can go from a screaming match, literally to a, a silent graveyard where one person or the other person gives the other one the silent treatment. And that can last for long periods of time, which again, compounds on the stress for both partners and, of course, the family around, and every, it impacts everybody. So having a bad relationship or a bad time in a relationship can really be detrimental to, to your whole life. Having, if you, if you just put it into very simple terms, when you're in a relationship and that if that relationship isn't going strong, it throws you off altogether. It throws you off emotionally, mentally, and physically. And you struggle to handle little hiccups the life throws at you. They become huge hiccups. But when you're dealing, when you're together, when you're emotionally stronger and you're going towards the same goals and same objectives, then you're sort of strong. No matter what life throws at you, you handle things better. Let me just bring my screen up because I lost you all. And when you're stronger together in a relationship, no matter what life throws at you, you handle it together. You handle it together as a unit. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you are feeling stressed and distant from your partner, don't worry, we got you covered. So we're going to go through a very quick exercise that is good for you if you're in a relationship and you want to improve a relationship. And it's also good if you would like, if you're looking for a relationship and you would like to attract a partner you want and you deserve so okay you so in this exercise what we're going to do is i'm going to ask all of you to take part in this and it's very simple and it won't take long um, the only thing i ask for you to do is to close your eyes and listen to my words so as soon as you've done that i'll give you five seconds for everybody to just close their eyes as long as it's safe where you are to do so close your eyes and um, we'll begin okay now now that your eyes are closed, I want you to, I want you to imagine your part. I want you to imagine the perfect situation. Oh, oh, sorry. 
Okay, so now that your eyes are closed, I want you to think about the ideal person that you have in mind. I want you to think of their looks. I want you to think of their, their hair. I want you to think of their body shape and body style. Think of their personality. Think of their behaviors, their actions, their words, their livelihood, their smell, their outlook for the future. I want you to think of all these things of your ideal person, whoever that person would be in your relationship, in your life. Now think of it for a few moments. Now that you've done this, keep your eyes closed. I want you to think of your current partner and think how many of these characteristics that they have. Think about it for a second or two. Now I want you to think how many of these characteristics do you have? Okay, you can open your eyes. Now, if you, on that last question of how many of these characteristics do you have, the answer was very few. Then I want you to understand something, that life itself is a mirror. It's an echo of what we portray. And when we look for something, we literally have to be able to give that something. So when we look for somebody with a really nice personality or um, fitness or health, we have to show that within ourselves. And that's how we attract what we really, really want. And not what we deserve, but what we want. And that's the law of attraction. And that's just a fact. So if you want the kind of person in your life that you really, really are aiming for, please um, think about what you want and portray that to the world and be that person. And you will definitely get that kind of person. And if that person is already in your life, then I can guarantee you one thing, that person will change to become the person you want. And just taking from, in fact, I will give you a couple of minutes just to digest that information because then I'm going to move on to a totally different topic. So yes, reflect what you want. Put it out there, the things that you want or act those things that you want. So taking from there, I'm going to sort of talk about slightly differently, talk about your energies and talk about your vibration. I have a lot of clients come to me and they say, Monica, I keep attracting the wrong people in my life. I keep having the same relationship that aren't good for me. So this probably section is good for people who are looking for a relationship and they, you want a relationship that you deserve and that you want. And then you don't want to do no compromises because relationship isn't about compromise. Relationship is about growing together, enjoying together and having fun together. So when people come to me and say, I keep attracting the same relationship, then I, this is how I explain. So let's say you are in a vibration here and that vibration could be, I feel I want relationship, I want love, I want to be happy, I'm not happy, I'm not content, I'm not at peace, I'm sad, I'm depressed, and I'm sad. So you're on a lower vibration. Now, if you're going out there to look for somebody, look for love, what you're going to do, you're going to attract people at the same vibration, somebody who is also want love, want to be loved, want sad, but want to be happy, somebody's feeling low but they would like to feel better so you're attracting the same people at the same vibration yet that's not the person we want that's not the person i was attracting hang on i don't want you but if that's exactly what anil said it's what you're reflecting out there is what you attract now if you work on your energies and if you balance your, so I do a lot of chakra balancing and I do a lot of Reiki where I help people to increase their vibration as to where they would like to be. So what we do is balance chakras, balance the energies with Reiki and then every treatment, it increases your vibration. It makes you emotionally stronger. It helps you let go of your past. So when you are in a certain vibration, feeling up here, not here, now you're positive. You're feeling content. You're feeling peace. You have a lot more willpower, a lot more motivation. You're stable. You're certain. Now, who are you going to attract? 
somebody with a similar vibration who is stable. You don't need somebody to complete you. You don't need somebody to fill your needs. You want a companion at the same level at you. So you will attract somebody who is complete in themselves. So two together, now you can make the relationship a beautiful relationship. Same theory goes for people who are in a relationship. So if you are feeling distant, if you are feeling I have many clients who come to me to say, I don't feel connected to my wife. We don't communicate. We don't talk much. Can you help me? Can you balance my energy so we feel a little bit more connected? So they have the treatment, they have the energies balanced, and then they come back and say, you know, I had a really lovely conversation with my wife. I feel very much connected. I didn't know she cared so much for me. So sometimes you just go to, up your vibration you got to lift your spirit up and do the things that you love and like and make you smile also increases your vibration and when you're vibrating high you don't see the negativity of life the stress doesn't sort of touch you because you are in a very very good place we get stressed we get overwhelmed when we are emotionally low and i would just like to add to that to say that a lot of people use meditation in order to to get their um, energies balanced and to feel good as well. Um, what we do is we do meditations as well as Reiki. Um, but the thing you have to remember, I think, the most is what you focus on the most is what grows in your life. So if your underlying thoughts are of worry, doubt, and fear, even though you may say other things, if your underlying thoughts are those, that's what you're going to attract. So what you have to know is you have to feel what you really want. Actually believe it and it will come to you. So now we are going to give you a secret sauce to bring the spa back into your relationship. So now I really would like all of you to take part in this. And we are going to go through a little checklist and please make a note. So I'm going to give you five things and out of those five things see what those things resonate with you the most you may resonate with one which is your dominant emotion or you may resonate more than one but do write it down and then also write all the fives down but put a tick next to the one that resonates with you because you might be able to do the same exercise with your children with your partner or whoever you want to see how to use a secret source to create the relationship you want. So here you go. And the secret source is love language. Okay, so there are five main love languages. The first one, uh, just before I tell you about the first one, these were all developed by a, um, a Gary Chapman, his PhD, uh, some time ago. Um, but they've all worked and they all literally make complete sense. So there are five love languages that we all can use in our relationships. And, and they're the way of communicating what you really want and how you want it. So the first one is we use words of affirmation. So we use words to actually verbally say what we want. So we might say to our partners, I love you. Uh, I really uh, thank you for what you did. And uh, I really respect that you did X or Y. So we use words to communicate ourselves to our partners. So just to elaborate on that. So first, you're going to make a note of what you would like, or would you like your partner to give you those words of affirmation? Would you, is your love language, the way you feel loved by your partner, is it, number one, which is the affirmation, would you like your partner to say, I love you, or give you compliments? appreciate what you do and that sort of thing if that's your love language and if you think your if your partner did that you would feel loved then that will be your love language second one is quality time so if you feel that your partner spends quality time with you without any divided attention on the phone on the laptop or doing homework or whatever is that your love language where you get undivided attention from your partner? Is that your love language? Yeah. So does that, is that the one that really floats your boat? Is that the one that makes you really connect with, with your partner when they spend quality time with you 
not on the phone, not on playing a game, not chatting with someone else, but undivided attention. The third one is receiving gifts. <laughs> now, who doesn't like to receive gifts? But it may not necessarily be your love language. Everybody likes to get gifts, but some people just connect with other people when they receive a gift. And it's not just the receiving of the actual gift itself. It's the, it's the thought that goes in, into the gift, into the planning, into the giving and into the creating and then gifting as well. And that's really important to understand. If your partner's love language is gifting, then small gifts here and there really will help them to connect with you. Or if your love language is receiving gifts, then you do a little tick for your love language because we are working out both the love languages. And the fourth one is act of service. So if your love language is that you would like your partner to maybe make you cups of teas uh, or do a quick massage or put a petrol in your car or whatever you want, those little act of kindness, you might say. So if your love language is when somebody does something small, little, but a caring feeling behind it, if that's your love language, then do a little tick in front of that. Yeah, absolutely. And the last one is physical touch. So when you like to be hugged, when you like to have somebody hold your hands, when you like to be slightly touched, and if that physical touch is your love language, then you do a little tick in front of that. So those are your five languages. So first you figure out what is your love language, then at least you know the way you want to be loved. I have so many clients and then the client will say, the woman might say, you know, I cook, I do cooking all day long. I clean the house. I look after the kids. And I was told uh, that to, uh, to the way to the man's heart is through his stomach and I do all that. I don't feel loved, right? And a man says... Well, you, that's one way of connecting with somebody, but that may not be their love language. So even though you may be doing these, uh, these things that you feel that you're giving all this information, all this stuff, but it's not getting through to the other person, that's probably because that's not their love language. And their love language might be they want to be appreciated. They want to be heard. They want to be valued. They want to be complimented things that you did, not the other stuff that you're doing. So it's so important to have a great relationship if you want to make it better or if it's going through under a lot of pressure and stress, knowing each other language, knowing what each makes each other tick is your secret sauce. No matter what your relationship is going through, if you know what makes my partner tick, you do more of that. We stop doing that sometimes because we're too busy. We can't be bothered. We stop looking nice. We start taking each other for granted. So those are your love languages. Now, is there anyone who would like to share their love language? You don't have to, but if anybody would like to share, I would love to hear it. If you just virtually raise your hands uh, and then See if there's anything so far you learned. If you want to just share the whole experience, what you learned and what you would take from this session today, I would love to know. So if you just virtually raise your hands. If we don't see any hands, we can move on to the next part. So anything you learned so far, anything you picked, anything that was something new for you from today's session. So as an example, I can tell you that um, I like it when people speak to me. And it helps me to connect with them on a, on a, on a stronger level. So when, when people say to me, I really appreciate what you did. Um, I like the fact that you did X, Y, Z. I feel that connection is stronger between me and the other person. So that's my love language. And second example I could give, my daughter. Before I knew these love languages, and my daughter, she's 17. So from young age till now, she comes and she drops herself on me for a hug. And I'm just thinking, you know, you're dropping all your hair on me. You're all over me. You're just putting so much weight on me because you're 17 and tall. And then I thought, when I knew about the love language, I thought, my God, her language, love language is hugs and touches. And she wants that physical touch. And the reason why she keeps plunking herself on me. And now when she comes and hugs me, I give her the hug back. I give her 
and feel that need that she has in that moment because she want to feel love. And the way she want to be feel love is by touch because she's showing her love to me the way she wants. Yeah. So we can pick up these signals from a partner because they will tell you directly or indirectly how they would like to be loved. But hopefully with this technique, life should be easier rather than we working harder and finding out what the love language is. Yeah. And you can use these obviously to connect more with your partner. And when your partner or yourself knows what each other's language is, it's so much easier and you don't have to work things out or, or you know, or think, well, I gave you this, I did this for you, I did that for you, and you're still not connecting. It's because the love language is different for each person. So uh, now that you have the answers, I hope that makes a big difference to your relationship. And just to sum up, we're going to move on to the 10 tips for the relationship, and then we'll go into the question answers, if you have any. Just to sum up the relationship. The relationships are very simple if we are very much in tune with each other. If we understand each other, where the other person is coming from, rather than being in the defensive mode, somebody says something and the other person says, yeah, but it's because of that, because of that, because of that, we are shutting the communication. If we understand where the other person is coming from, makes all the difference because one person wants to be heard and understood. If you sort of Pay attention to each other. Don't take each other for granted. But if you just pay attention to each other and say, my God, you look beautiful today. Oh, actually, you know, you look not too bad. Things like give that attention, that sort of thing. So relationships are very much understanding each other and being in tune with each other, knowing what each other wants and yeah. needs. And, really, you know, kids, responsibilities, money, workload, that throws you all out of sync. But if you stay strong none of those things will stress you out because you are on the same page. Yeah, and on the same wavelength. It's so important to be there. So here are your 10 tips for a best relationship. I might have to read those out though. <laughs> so your top 10 tips. L obviously, the first one you already done, love your partner's love language. Know about your partner's love language and then do more of what they like and i'm sure they will do more of what you like number two would be appreciate your partner feel the gratitude for what they do and don't take them for granted understand that you know people do things but they don't think do things against you but rather for them so try to sort of understand where they're coming from number four there may be a lot more going on in your partner's life, in, the, in your partner's mind that they're not discussing with you for whatever reason. So just remember that communication is key. And if you are that person, try to communicate more and let your partner know what's going on in your world because trust is so important. And when you can trust your partner, it builds the bridge and makes it even stronger. You know you're connected in the first place. Just try to remember what connected you in the first place and just go back to that. And that will give you that little spark that you're missing. Number six would be think of all the good things that your partner has done or is doing or has done and add them up and literally make a, a mountain out of all the good things. And that will just help you to focus on, on the best parts of your partner because as I said earlier, what you focus on the most is what grows in your life. So focus on the best and you'll get more of it. Enjoy your time together. Whatever little time or more time you have, enjoy your time together. Do things together. Get a babysitter. You know, we can learn so many things from this Western world. Get a babysitter. Go out on a date dress up look nice look nice for your own partner just enjoy each other company rather than picking on each other number eight just remember you don't have to be in each other's pocket all the time so a little bit of distance sometimes can be a good thing so if one of you wants to go away for a weekend with the boys or with the girls or, or with a family member, it's okay. As long as you trust each other and you know that a little bit of distance is okay when you come back together, it should make things stronger for you. 
This is very much, you know, when we send a child to a nursery uh, and then the child comes back from a nursery and we love the child. But if you were with the child all day long, every day thinking, can somebody please take this kid away from me for a few hours? It's very much like that. Little distance goes a long way. And also, don't be afraid to do new things. Don't be afraid to try new things. And that could be anything. Like I just mentioned, a couple of them. Go on dates. Dress up. Not dress up in other, other shapes or form. But yeah, get dressed. Look nice. Go out. Enjoy each other. And number 10, the final one that of our top tips is what you focus on grows. As I said twice before, what you focus on grows. And I, I, honestly, I cannot say that enough. Think of the best things. Think of each other in, in a best possible light and you will find a way to make things work uh, and, to, and to progress with your relationship. You can't go wrong if you focus on the right things because your mindset is what everything is all about. So focus on each other's best points and forget the negatives. Let the good stuff outweigh the little nitty-picky things. Yeah. Yeah. So those are our 10 top tips. And I, I can read what Shweta said. And she said, my eight-year-old daughter just said she loves quality time and hugs the best. So she's got two love languages, Shweta. So like I said, people might have one dominant one, but they will have another one. So do more of that. And you'll see the child will become a beautiful woman and she'll feel loved. And then she will project that love when she grows up. Absolutely. So now it's a question and answer times. Do anybody have any questions for us? Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Monica and Anil. That was quite uh, interesting. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a psychiatrist by profession. And uh, I can see the, you know, you, you, you stress the ro role of stress in relationships. You know, stress is something which I see people don't really realize. And, and, and it's, 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 you know, we need to address it, I guess, to keep the relationships healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other points you said about, you know, trust in the relationship, gratitude. I think it, it, it's generally, you know, be, being gratitude towards things improves uh, the relationships uh, generally. My question is, you know, like, especially when you have children, you know, your relationship with your partner, in a way, takes a backseat. Um, so is there any suggestions, you know, how, how do you balance uh, the needs of the children as well as, you know, maintain the relationship with your partner? So a lot of people look for work-life balance and we search for it and we search for it and we search for it and we don't even know what we're looking for. But that's my opinion. What does work-life balance mean? Here's a little secret for all of you. When you're at work, give you 100%. Don't think about home. Don't think about kids. Give you 100%. When you're with your kids, give 100%. Don't be on your phone. Don't be looking at the TV. Don't be eating. Give you 100%. When you're with your partner, give them 100%. Don't think about work and don't think about children. Give everything 100% is the way you create balance. If you're with your partner out there, you're talking about everything else but them or how you can enjoy that company. So make time. I guess you've got to make time first for each other, but when you are together for little time or more time, make the most of it and keep the distractions to minimum, which means don't think about anything else. That time is their time. And that will definitely bring the spark back because what we want in a relationship is undivided attention because things take over and we don't we're not important anymore for each other because we're too busy dealing with all those responsibilities and i also would say that um time plays a big factor in this because when you're short of time the stress builds up you've got a workload of things to do your partner's asking for certain things the kids are asking for things so how do you actually deal with that and one of the systems that i use is what i call chunking and we, we take all the information that you have in the different areas, work, uh, home life, kids, and uh, it could be anything else, partner, and so on and so on and so on. And we just compress it into three separate lots. So it could be, I have a deadline to meet, I have a, uh, a schedule to do, I have a Zoom to do, I have loads of work to do for home, I have a client to meet. That comes all under work. 
So we put everything into one, then we put everything else into another and everything else into another. Now you only have three areas to focus on rather than 20 or 30. And when you can focus on three simple areas, it's a lot easier to manage your time and to be <laughs> in the moment with each and every person and give that time to that to your partner. Because you have to when you value somebody and you value somebody's time, it's a lot easier to connect with them and to give them that that feeling, because everybody's after a feeling, a feeling of you're with me, I'm with you, um, you love me, I love you, um, my time is spent with my kids, and therefore they are going to grow up uh, balanced and happy and so on. But everybody is looking for a feeling. That's why everybody does anything. And if you are deciding to be in the relationship, might as well just make most of it and enjoy it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. That was a detailed explanation. And as you rightly said, um, being uh, giving them the attention comes to, in my mind, uh, I mean, I have started practicing mindfulness. Whatever you're doing, you know, do it mindfully. Even when you're eating, when you're talking to someone, probably that, that extrapolates to relationships as well. I can see a few questions, but, you know, some people might not want to you know, come come on the video. So you are welcome to post your questions um, on the chat box and uh, Monica and Anil will try to answer it. Uh, we've got 10 more minutes, 10, 15 more minutes. Um, the next question is from uh, Dr. Kanda Bharati. Uh, he is asking uh, both of you, Anil and uh, uh, Monica, do you advise or anyone can do remote healing for couples? Yes. And we've so got a few more questions after this. Yeah, so with the remote healing, there's two things we can do. We can do distance healing where we will arrange time with you and then we will do the chakra balancing. Uh, we can also do remote uh, relationship coaching. So if somebody wants to go through the energy way to get to the result, yes, by all means, a lot of people wants to go through the practical way, which is the uh, relationship coaching. So either way, we get to the same result. Yeah, so that can be done remotely and distance. Okay, thank you very much. And now I will call upon uh, 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 Mr. Sri Kandaraja from London. Uh, do you want to unmute and ask your questions? Thank you very much for your introduction and everything that you have explained to us. Uh, thank you. I want to know what is the difference between Reiki and meditation because I do, we do meditation every single day. But I want to know what is Reiki. So Reiki is very much healing energy. So what happens with Reiki is if I was to give you a Reiki, I have to be attuned and I have to have my chakras open. So if I'm giving you the treatment and if I'm balancing your chakras, I am simply balancing your chakras by connecting with you energetically, whereas I am sort of balancing. For me to balance your chakras, I have to have my chakras open to receive the energy to pass it on to you. With meditation, you focus on the breathing, you focus on certain things. So whatever is coming through your thoughts, you're sort of letting it go and you're trying to sort of, it's very much breathing exercise. You're slowing your heart, you're slowing your brain so you can recharge your battery in a sense. But with the <coughs> chakra or Reiki, you're balancing those energies. So why do energies go out of sync? So let's say a lot of people, they might have a treatment they might have a relationship breakdown, they might have an illness that sort of tips the energy out of sync. And then when you're out of sync, you start to feel the emotions connected to it. So let's say your throat chakra, which is here. If that's out of balance, you would feel that you're not being able to express the feeling the way you want to express. You're either bottling things up to say, actually, you know, what's the point? Nobody's even listening to me. Nobody cares. I'm going to keep my emotions to myself. Or... If it's overactive, then you might start end up really angry and frustrated. So you're expressing your feelings, but in a lot of anger. And either way, it's no good because you want to be able to say what you really want to say beautifully so the other person know exactly what you're saying. So if that chakra is out of balance, you might feel nervous, anxious, stressed. You might worry about little things. You might feel that I am not coping as well as I would like to, but if that chakra was balanced, you will very much be in control of your emotions, the way you speak. You wouldn't worry. You certainly wouldn't stress because you are emotionally stronger. And so that Reiki is balancing your energies to align you with the things that you want to manifest in life. 
balancing energy. So how do you do that? If somebody has to do it for you or you can do it yourself? So I, I tend to, you can do it. I haven't tried any other way. So I balance everybody's energy. That could be distance. That could be somebody who can come to me face to face. I balance it with Reiki. A lot of people, if they want to do it on their own, they can balance it, find a maybe chakra balancing meditation that requires visualization. You can balance it with crystals uh, and many other ways. So I balance the chakras with Reiki and Reiki is a technique that we use to balance those energies. Reiki is the universal life force, which uh, is literally everywhere and in all living things, including plants, animals, humans, everything. And that when when we use that as Reiki masters, the Reiki, the, the energy literally comes through us and then is dispelled through us to to the our objective. And that could be whichever person or anywhere. You would think only the uh, med- by medit- meditation, doing only meditation can so be yeah. Or you have to use the Reiki as well as meditation. You can you can balance your chakras with meditation. So what happens is meditation is you are focusing on those chakras. So you need to have a little bit of knowledge about the chakras because chakra has particular color. So in a meditation, you are visualizing that particular color to do with that chakra. So if you're starting from your head all the way down to the bottom of your spine, so you will focus on each chakra, what the colors are, and then you're going to visualize how they're sort of spiraling. And that could help. Okay, thank you, Rumas, uh, Mrs. Yeah, Arundhati from uh, uh, from London. Next, I call upon uh, Mani from Basing Stroke. He has a question. If you can unmute and ask your yeah. question. Hello, hi, hello both. Uh, thanks, Monica, and uh, uh, <coughs> sorry for your time. I just wanted to answer a quick question. Something in the past, I have uh, you know tried to share and check with my partner about the love language. Uh, it, it was from a forward or something. Uh, you don't do not not surprisingly she said it doesn't those list none of them suits her so what do you do <laughs> then <laughs> then i guess you uh, did she tell you what her love language was then no i mean neither of us knew what it was the, and so i just showed this from a website or something and then she says none of these actually tick and if you ask me personally as well I don't know. Maybe there is something else that is probably not defined in that list we spoke about. Um, you know, in these days, to be to be very honest, I'm not enthused by gifts because you see, if I want to buy something, I want to look at what I'm buying. I mean, I know it might go against if I'm buying a phone or a watch. I just really like to look at okay, these are the things that I like. So it's not so things. So there is genuinely we couldn't uh, arrive upon. Uh, this is mine. This is yours. So that you know we could mutually work on. Okay, so let's forget the love language because that yeah. becomes sometimes too technical, right? You would know mm-hmm. what makes your wife tick. You would right. know what's going to wind her up and you know what's going to make her smile. Okay. So you literally go back to the basics. You know what you do is it's going to make a smile or it's going to tick a balance. So what makes a smile, you do more of that. Okay, there is a small, um, uh, you know, Okay, let's say there are some points, right? Let me be, so let's say some, if I say, let me say if I like physical touches, right? And if she doesn't, there's no way two of us are going to win. So you is will. it a balance in some no, times? If you like the physical touch and hugs and touches and cuddles and her love language is something different, you got to give her what she needs and she will give you what you need is the whole point because when she feels emotionally connected to you, hugs and cuddles are a byproduct of that. If you don't give her what she needs, you can forget the hugs and cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you got to give her and same, vice versa. If she gives the hugs and cuddles to you, yeah. you are going to go out of your way to make her happy and you will figure out what makes her happy. So it's literally, it's hand in hand, two things are done. It doesn't matter who starts a process first, but if somebody knows what the love language is, might as well just make a start on that. Then the other person, you know, like children, we don't, we don't know what children's love language is. We do anything in our power to bring that little smile in their yeah. eyes. We do everything. We buy toys. We do this. We try many things to see what makes them tick. Do that for your partner. Okay. What makes them tick? Put little effort in, put little investment in, because that relationship is going to go a long way and it could be a very long journey if it isn't going in the right direction. Sure. 
Okay, one last question. I just uh, so the 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 service you provide probably or the coaching. You know what about the cost of them or like where would we know more about? We need to connect several. Oh, Manny, did you see the flyer? Because I will try to type in the telephone okay. number and I will okay, sure. put the email address in. But flyer has all the details. So there are right. not just one or two services we offer. We offer many, and we okay. offer remotely as well as face to face. And we can always have. Yes. In fact, the last call to action was if anybody wants to have a chat, we are offering because you guys attended, we are offering a 30 minutes free, no obligation call. If you want to okay. talk about things, if you want to clarify certain services or prices or whatever, or if you just feel stuck on one point and you need a little help to get you moving, more than happy to do that. OK, sure. Thank you. I shall connect uh, later. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mani, for your question. And, uh, you know, going back to this, Monica, you know, it all goes to the old age saying, you know, if you want to get anything, first you need to give, you know, it's in a way paradoxical. Um, okay, uh, we got 10 more minutes. Uh, and if people want to, they can, you know, ask a question or maybe they can post it on the group chat. <laughs> Meanwhile, is there any other, can you give us more tips to how to you know, like uh, continue our relationships. It, generally, we say, you know, men are very poor in, in uh, looking for the emotions in their partners. Is there any tips, especially for men, how to improve that? You know, we are genetically, I guess, wired to be less <laughs> emotional. Yes. I see. Yes. Uh, I guess from a woman's point of view, I'll give it from my point of view, and you can all guys can take some tips from that. Women wants to be seen. Women wants to be heard. They wants to be valued. It's a long list here. You ask for this. <laughs> they want to be valued and they want to be appreciated. And I guess when they're talking to you, a majority of the women love language is, and that is majority, not all the time, they want to be given that undivided attention. So a lot of women will say, I'm talking to you. You're not even listening. And the man's saying, yeah, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. And then two minutes after, they'll say, what did you say? So it's giving them the undivided attention. If you listen to a woman who's stressed, angry, annoyed, if you just give that little undivided attention, trust me, the stress goes down by 80% because she's been hurt. She said it, she moved on, and now you can be go back to happy, happy relationship. So I say pay attention. Take her out. Surprise her on a date. Don't tell her where you're taking her. Say, right, make sure you're ready at this time, and we're going out. But do have a decent date planned. <laughs> no, a takeaway of fish and chips or anything like that. So yeah, and also as a partner, you really would know what makes your wife tick. We don't think that far because we're too busy in our own heads. But if we just slow down, and if we give the relationship the importance as much as we do to our work and money, and our children, and we put them in the same priority as the others you will know that if your relationship is strong, you can handle every other box. If your relationship isn't in the right place, every single box or every plate that you're juggling is going to fall down because your foundation is your, your relationship is your foundation to everything that you're working for, your children, work, you're earning money, you're working hard for something because you want to enjoy your relationship and enjoy your money with the partner you're with. So put, put them in the priority list. Not You're, you're not thinking I'm going to put my wife or my husband on pedestal or something, but it's the relationship. You want to cherish the relationship and make it as important as it deserves. Okay, thanks, Monica. Uh, for people who joined late, we, we, we are recording this and, and we'll upload it on, uh, on, on YouTube for you to you know, have a look later. Uh, we got uh, eight more minutes. Meanwhile, uh, Monica and Anil, can I ask you maybe to share what are the commonest you know, problems people come in relationships and, uh, and maybe you can share, you know, people might be a bit hesitant to ask in a group, but if you can share, in, you know, you've been doing this for years. So can you tell us what, what are the commonest problems people come with and can you also offer a solution to that? Well, I can tell you from a man's point of view that... <laughs> he was dying which, probably for that. <laughs> <laughs> there comes a relationship conflict in action. <laughs> but I can tell you that a lot of the people that I have are men that come to me. And they talk literally, when we get down to the, to the root of the problems, is they feel uh, emasculated. 
they feel as if their their masculinity has been taken away from them that that they are no longer the breadwinner that they are no longer uh, the person who was the head of the house and they feel as if their energies somehow have been diminished and what they're looking for is for their partner to understand this and to accept this and also to to be able to um to well to be in a in a situation where they can um give back knowing this because a lot of women and I don't want to make uh, an image here of women but they just are more interested in in what they want and what's good for them and which is fine which is absolutely fine that certain men <laughs> may, may feel that not yeah, everyone not everyone but um if women can also understand because it will help their relationship as well to understand how the man feels the men are very as you said they're very closed they they have a a habit of not speaking up not showing their emotions bottling things inside taking the stress on internally and and in a way manning up which is a key term that people use but in fact they they're just boys at the end of the day and they want somebody to understand their situation and what they're going through and and if their partner can and do that it literally just opens the floodgates for them to to be responsive and to be um open for their partner as well so it all comes down to communication communication yeah. is the key you you say that monica hi airline uh, i think i might ask one question i'm sure it might be in most of the men's minds um so one of the typical complaints with you get in any marriage is that men don't talk with uh, you know their partners often so like after a while i'm sure some of you might agree that it's like you what's 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 more to talk about or well, how what is that you do anil i mean or what is the general advice as to what is the conversation that you you know you, you see there's a complaint also saying that you talk to your friends ridiculously for that's because you they, you you grew up with them in a college or something um you have something similar like a cricket or a cinema or some movies to talk about mm-hmm. with the spouse i know as much as i say this is not fair but there's a point where you it's just this is how much there is to talk nothing much to talk about yeah yeah so you feel as if you you literally talked about everything now yeah. what you get to a situation like that yeah that usually yeah. happens when you lose interest in each other because when you find a stranger and then you click you can talk for hours and hours and hours because you found something interesting to talk about but with your our partners because we are sort of with them all the time and we talk about problems stresses money children the focus is problem it's a very problem focused conversation and then you just don't really want to talk to each other because we are drained out from the problem conversation then there is no because you didn't connect when you don't connect there's a disconnect and when there's a disconnect you really know in the lovey dovey mood to even have that conversation yeah because there is a disconnect because you both drained out from the conversation you probably had a screaming match or you probably given each other the silent treatment you're both going in the opposite direction and they say okay let's give it a try but when you're giving it a try that emotional connection isn't there and when the emotional connection isn't there we struggle to communicate we just think we're talking to the brick wall or actually you know what i can't be bothered actually if i say this she's going to get upset he's going to get upset less not even bother so we hold on to the emotions we talk less and less and less and then we drift away so for that find something that you both like in the heart there's a problem with the audio i guess sorry can you hear me Yeah go on Monica I can we can hear you Yeah yeah so fine I don't know if... both, both of you enjoy you know there might be a movie or cinema or something things that you both enjoy that doesn't require a lot of conversation yeah, just... because movie you can spend 2 <clears throat> hours without talking but you're still emotionally connecting you might only talk for 10 minutes but you ended the evening on a good note so do things that require doesn't require too much talking slowly slowly when you connect you want to talk and say let's go for a meal so we can really have the conversation the movie won't be in the picture so start it gentle and find one common thing that you can talk about for a few minutes each and take part in each other's interests 
And um, if, if everything fails, then fake it until you make it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Anil. And one final tip, you know, for the rest of the we- evening, you know, we are on Sunday night now, but give us one tip, you know, how to improve our relationship, which we can practice uh, tonight. It's not after nine o'clock yet. <laughs> Uh, do you want to go first or? So what was the question? What's one thing we can do tonight? Yes. No, just, you know, today, you know, one practical tip to improve our relationship and communication with your partner. Okay. I, sorry. So I'll, I'll go first and then you can finish off. Um, what I would say is now that you've been told or now that we've given you this, uh, these five love languages, um, they're not a comprehensive list, list but they are the, the major ones. The starting point. Yes, just try to find out your partner's love language. Have a conversation, sit down together in a comfortable surrounding with no distractions and just have that conversation. What is it that makes you feel good? Is it this, 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 this or this? Out of all of these, which is the one main one that you feel the best if I was to do X, Y, Z? And when you know that, I can guarantee you one thing, the connection that you're going to make will be, will just, it will explode. When you find that connection with your partner of what makes that other person tick, what makes them feel good, what makes them act good, and what makes them want to be involved with you, it's literally everything for you. And you, Monica? I probably say have a conversation, very gentle conversation. It shouldn't have a huge agenda behind it because when you don't know where the conversation is going, as a couple, you end up falling out because you literally said something that you're not supposed to. And then the other person respond to it and then, hey, ho, you now have a big blown argument. So I'll just have, don't have any agenda and just sit together, okay. have a cup of tea or a drink and just talk, turn the TV off, and just say, let's talk about what did you do? Or so, just a general conversation with no agenda, no phone, no TV, just you two. Don't talk about work, don't talk about stresses, don't talk about children, just tell me a little bit about yourself, and then talk to each other, talk to each other, literally. Very good, very good point. as As couples, talk to each other, not as parents, no, as employers, business owners, none of that. You're talking to each other as couples. Yeah, yeah, very good point. It's, though it's very difficult to switch off your WhatsApp and you know uh, speak with your partner. Anyway, thank you very much. You know, we have uh, reached our uh, end of our uh, session today. Thanks to Chandran who made it live on our British Indian Tamil radio. If you missed it, we will post a YouTube link. And if you want to contact Monica and Anil, it is on the flyer. But if not, contact me. I can sign post you. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Enjoy the rest of the evening.